Hey folks, Ron here. Nice to see you again. Hopefully it's nice to see me again. Today I'm coming to you from the home of, or will be in a minute, the home of Lindsey Buckingham and his wife Kristen. Lindsey Buckingham, of course, was for many years, sort of off and on, the guitar player for the band Fleetwood Mac. Um, unfortunately, a couple of years ago he was fired, uh, presumably by Stevie Nicks, who he had a romantic relationship with uh, from the late 60s until about 1976, 1977. Um, but they have been at loggerheads and at odds ever since. So anyway, Lindsey Buckingham is no longer in the classic band, the legendary band Fleetwood Mac. Um, but this is where he lives. And he's a great guitar player. He's constantly ranked among one of the greatest guitar players of all time. Uh, and what else can I tell you about him? I mean... I'll tell you that when we get near the house, you'll see, or maybe you won't see, there's a sign that says no parking within 50 feet or however many feet of mailbox, which means don't park in front of our damn house because we know that you're here to look at our house. Anyway, um, so, you know, Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks were a couple and they went to Menlo Atherton High School together in the North Bay of San Francisco in the 60s. I believe Stevie's actually a year older than Lindsay and they were in a band together called Fritz, shortened to the name of Fritz. It was the Fritz something memorial band um, or for teacher. Oh, by the way, there's the Getty Museum on the hill. Let's see if you can see it. Gosh, I'm looking at it. You can't really see it from here. Sorry, you can just see my eye, but that's the Getty Museum there, right below the Getty Museum. Maybe when we get closer, we'll be able to see it. Um, but anyway, and there's cameras all over here looking at us because that's L.A. for you in these nice neighborhoods. But anyway, they were in a band in high school, <clears throat> and then they were in a band. And then, I should say, they moved out to California. They made Stevie Nicks and Lindsay became a romantic couple. Then they moved out to California together, and they made a solo album um, called Buckingham Nicks, which unfortunately didn't sell very well. And, I mean, Stevie Nicks was literally washing, uh, was cleaning the home of a record producer named Keith Olson. And Lindsay was getting work where he had, by the way, this is the home. This is the gate, at least, to the home. You can't really see it too well, but that's the way they want it. A couple cars out front. There's the upstairs. Nice. I think they've got a couple kids too. Come on. Push to call. So if you want in, you gotta get on that call box. That's the home. Right there. We're gonna keep walking and then maybe we'll catch a little bit of oh there's a good shot of it. A good shot of the upstairs right there. So where was I? Oh, so Lindsay, not a great shot of the upstairs there. So Lindsay was taking gigs where he could. He was even playing for uh, I believe it was Don Everly of the Everly Brothers. Either Phil or Don, I'm sorry, I don't remember which one. But what happened was that Bob Welch, who was the guitar player, the American guitar player for the British band Fleetwood Mac, decided to leave the band. So all of a sudden the band, uh, Fleetwood Mac, is without a guitar player, and they're going to have to, I, I believe their visas were expiring, they're going to have to go back to England. It was just quite the mess. So what happened was that one day, Nick Fleetwood was with his kids and his groceries, and he happened to run into Keith Olsen, who owns Sound City, the recording studio. Now, remember, Keith Olsen was the producer who Stevie Nicks was basically cleaning her house, cleaning his house for money. And Lindsay, you know, when she was a waitressing, and Lindsay was um, trying to get gigs where he could, and they were writing material and just trying to live in a little crummy apartment, just trying to make their way. So... Mick Fleetwood one day runs into Keith Olsen, and Keith Olsen says, I've got this studio in the valley, and Mick was looking to record the next Fleetwood Mac album there, of course, he was also in need of a guitar player. So he goes into the studio, and he visits, his groceries are, you know, thawing out in the car, his kids are with him, and while he's in there, he says, let me play something we have. Keith Olsen says, let me play to something to demonstrate, you know, the sound here at at Sound City at the studios and he plays something from the Fleetwood 
from the Buckingham Knicks album. And also there's contradictory, you know, opinions on this, but I believe Mick Fleetwood has said that Stevie was actually in the studio that day and he did see her and said, hmm, cute blonde. And they later had a romantic relationship too, after Stevie and Lindsay broke up. So anyway, um, at that point, oh, so it's coming. at this point, um, they, Mick said to Keith Olsen, whoever that guitar player is, you know, from the track that you played in, maybe I can get him, I'm in need of a guitar player. So, they called, they arranged a meeting at a Mexican restaurant here in Los Angeles, and, and well, Lindsay, by the way, said, you know, first of all, if I join the band, it's a package deal, you gotta take my girlfriend, Stevie, too. So, Stevie was all for it. She went out and bought every Fleetwood Mac record they had made since 1967 with all Fleetwood Mac's different incarnations. And she was all for it. And she said, look, if we can add something to this band, we can do it. And then maybe we can go back to being, you know, a solo, a, a, a dual act, you know, Fleet Buckingham Knicks. Lindsay wasn't as keen to do it. He wanted to keep trying to be Buckingham Knicks and go his own way, should we say, and write his own material and so on and so forth. But Stevie said, look, they're an established band. They sell half a million copies, pretty much every record, and this could really help us out. So met at a rex Mexican restaurant, and the rest is history. Christine saw that, Christine McVie of Fleetwood Mac saw that she wasn't threatened by having another girl in the band by Stevie Nicks. They've become good friends ever since, and the rest is history. Now, I guess that's the history of Fleetwood Mac, and like we say, Lindsey Buckingham has always had an on-again, off-again relationship with the band. I mean, even while being in the band, he's a brilliant arranger, and he can produce, and a great guitar player, and he's really molded, in particular, Stevie's song.